Hello, crochet friends. My name is Susan Lohman, the Crochet Architect. I have another mosaic crochet video for you today, and this one is on the inset technique of mosaic crochet. In my previous video, I taught you the overlay mosaic crochet technique. These two techniques are similar, but quite different as you'll see. So grab a hook and let's get started. Here I have two examples of overlay mosaic and inset mosaic. You can see that they're very similar, but there are a lot of differences too. The similar things are that they're each done with two contrasting colors of yarn. Each yarn color is worked across the row. You never change colors on the rows of mosaic crochet. They are both made with single crochets forming the horizontal lines of color and double crochets forming the vertical lines of color. Now the differences between them, the overlay crochet, mosaic crochet technique is done with one row of each color, alternating every row. The inlay mosaic crochet technique is done with two rows of each color. So you alternate every second row. And that's a big advantage because you don't have all the ends at each end of the overlay crochet technique because you are only changing colors every two rows and you can carry your color up the side. You don't have to begin and end each color. Now another difference is the overlay crochet technique has rows that are all worked on the right side. You don't work wrong side rows on that. But on the inset mosaic crochet technique, you have a right side row and a wrong side row, another right side row and wrong side row. So you're always alternating right side and wrong side rows. Another difference is on the overlay crochet technique, your double crochets are worked in the front loop, your single crochets are worked in the back loop. But on the inset mosaic crochet technique, all of your stitches are worked in both loops, your single crochets and your double crochets. Now you'll notice that the pattern on the overlay crochet technique is a little bit more defined because of working in those back loops. And it's a little less defined on the over in the on the inset mosaic crochet technique. The inset mosaic crochet technique is also much taller than the overlay mosaic crochet technique. So let's get started with the inset mosaic crochet. And we're going to look first at the chart that I have prepared for you. This is a larger chart that shows every row that we're going to work on this swatch. And if you'd like to work along with me to learn that technique, I think that would be a good idea. You can download this free chart from my website and I have a link in the video description. There's also another chart that I've included because many mosaic crochet charts only show one row in the chart for two rows that are worked. This chart shows each row that's worked. And I'll teach you how to read this chart towards the end of the video here. I'm going to be working with this easier chart to teach you the technique. And once you learn that, the other chart will make more sense. I'm also including written instructions for this swatch in that download. So you can get all three of those when you download this swatch PDF. So let's look at the chart because this is going to tell you everything you need to know to actually make the swatch that we're going to make in this video. As with all mosaic crochet, the back is stripes and all of the pattern is happening on the front. 
So we have three different kinds of symbols on our chart. We have a symbol that has nothing in the center. We have one with a circle and one with a dot. Each of these is color coordinated. And each one of these symbols is one stitch. We have 17 stitches across this row. And each row has 17 stitches. We always read our charts from the bottom to the top because that's how we crochet from the bottom to the top. The row number is next to where the row starts. So row 1A starts on the right and goes to the left. 1B starts on the left and goes to the right, just the way that we crochet our rows. So the symbols without anything inside are a single crochet. We have the main color in the gray on the chart and the contrasting color is in white. Let's skip down here and the symbols with the dots are a double crochet three rows below. The dark ones in gray are main color and the light ones in white are the contrasting color. Now, the difference on here is these two symbols with the circle in the center are the opposite color on the chart because we're only working with one color across. And in order for this chart to show the actual mosaic pattern, these symbols have the opposite color in them. So you would have this symbol here is a chain two with the contrasting color. And I'm going to demonstrate all of these for you. So as you see on the chart, there's two rows of the main color and then two rows of the contrasting color. And that's exactly what we've got in our swatch. We're alternating every two rows. So let's go ahead and get started with our swatch. I'm going to put my chart on my magnetic board, which I love for all kinds of charts because I can keep my place. And I'm going to put my magnet above rows 1A and 1B. And as you can see on the chart, these rows are just single crochet with the main color. And like I said, there are 17 squares across, so we have 17 single crochet in the first row. That means we're going to chain 18 and start our first single crochet in the second chain from the hook and single crochet in each chain across. Then we'll chain one and turn and single crochet in each single crochet across to the end of the row. And to save time, I've already done those two rows for you. So here's the first two rows. There's row one working in my chains and I worked in the back bump to have a nicer finished edge on the bottom. And here's row two at the end and I'm ready for my last stitch. And always in the last stitch of the wrong side rows, we're going to change colors. So to change our color, we're going to insert our hook and pull up a loop. But instead of finishing our single crochet with that color, we're going to grab our contrasting color. We want to leave a nice tail so that we can weave that in when we're done. And we'll yarn over and pull through those two loops. And that finishes the single crochet changing color to the other color. Now we're going to chain one and turn. And we need to look at our chart and see what we're going to do on row 2A. So 2A starts here and we start with three single crochets and then our chain two with the contrasting color and we're going to skip one stitch. So let's go ahead and do that. We're working in both loops in this technique. So we start with our three single crochets, one in each of the first three stitches. And then we follow that with a chain two and skip one stitch. We always chain one extra in this technique to help the chains 
go to the back a little bit and the double crochet to lay a little bit flatter on the front. So after those three single crochets and chain two, we repeat that again. Three single crochets, chain two, three single crochets, chain two, three single crochets, chain two. So I will repeat that across the row and meet you when I get to the end with the last stitch. Here I am at the end of row two, and I've done those three single crochet, chain two, skip one across, and I'm ready for the last single crochet. And we just make sure that it's under both loops and we're ready to chain one and turn and do row 2B. So we'll move the magnet up and see that row 2B has single crochets where there are single crochets and chain twos where there are chain twos. So the beauty of this technique is on the B rows you'll always do single crochets and most of the time do chain twos, but you'll you will single crochet wherever you have a single crochet or a double crochet, and I'll show you that when we get to that row. But these are kind of like resting rows. So all you have to do is read your stitches and say, okay, I have a single crochet here, so I'm going to single crochet in there. And I have two chains, so I'm going to do two chains. So we're pretty much mimicking our A rows on our B rows, but we never work a double crochet on a B row. We only work single crochets and chains. So I will finish this across and meet you when I get to the end of row 2B. Okay, I've gotten to the end of row 2B and I have my last stitch to work, which is another single crochet, but we have to change our color. So we'll work in both loops of that single crochet, pull up a loop, and we will drop this. We're going to pick up our other color. We can drop this to the front or the back. It just seems easier to go to the back. And we'll grab the other color that we dropped at the end of row 1A, and we will yarn over and pull through. Now we don't want to have this yarn too tight or too loose. So just play around with that tension and see what's good. Now we'll chain one and turn, and we're ready to start row 3A. And here's where the mosaic pattern will start emerging, because we're going to have some double crochets. So we're going to start this row with two single crochets, one in each of the first two stitches, And then our next stitch is chain two, skip one stitch. And the one after that is a double crochet. And the double crochets are worked three rows below. So to see where three rows below is, we say one, two, three. And the third row below is always the B row of the same color that you're working. So you're working over the contrasting color in the first two rows, and you're working into the third row. So we'll start our double crochet. We're going to work in front of these chain two spaces. So we'll put our hook in the front and back loops of that skipped stitch below the chain two, and back out in front of the two chains. And we'll yarn over and pull up a loop and now we can finish our double crochet. Now I've found that these double crochets tend to be a little bit too short, so I try to make them a little taller because we're covering two rows below into that third row. So next on our chart, we're going to actually repeat what we started with here. We're going to do two single crochets, chain two, and a double crochet three rows below. So I'll demonstrate that one more time. Single crochet in the next two stitches, chain two, and skip the next stitch, and double crochet in that skipped stitch three rows below, bringing your hook out in front of those chains. Drop your loop 
and finish your double crochet. And I will do that two more times and meet you at the end of this row. Okay, here I am at the end of row three. I've done those two singles, chain two and double across. And I've finished here and I have my last single crochet in this row. And what I'd like to point out is that these double crochets now are making our vertical lines across the opposite color. And that's what happens in mosaic crochet. We make horizontal lines and vertical lines, and that makes our mosaic pattern. So let's look at row two, or I'm sorry, 3B. And you can see on the chart that we start with two single crochets. So we're going to do a single crochet in our single crochet and a single crochet in our double crochet. And then our chain two spaces are always lined up with our previous chain two spaces. So we single crochet in each stitch. A single crochet and a double crochet are both stitches. And we chain two over every chain two space. So we always start our row with the chain one and turn. And we single crochet in that single crochet. And this is our double crochet. So we'll single crochet there. And we chain two over our chain two spaces. So we just read our stitches across and mimic what is there with single crochets and chains. And I'll meet you at the end of this row. Okay, here I am at the end of row 3B, and my last stitch is a single crochet, and I need to change my color again to my contrasting color. So we work the last single crochet in those two loops, and we need to drop this color and pick up the other color and finish our single crochet to change colors. Then we can chain one and turn. But before I turn, Notice the back of the work has no double crochets coming down, so all we have is horizontal stripes. So when we turn our work, we have our right side again. Let's look at our chart to see what comes next. On row 4a, we're using our contrasting color, and we start with a single crochet, then we have a chain two space and a double crochet, into the stitch three rows below. So let's do that and show you what happens now. We have our first single crochet, two chains, skip this stitch, and we're going to double crochet in the skipped stitch. You don't want to get into your chains because they want to just, you want to make sure you're going in the right stitch. So this is the stitch that I skipped here. We're going to insert our hook, come out in front of our chain two space, and do our double crochet. And then we'll look at our chart, and now we have two singles, a chain two, and another double crochet. And we're going to work that three times, and I will meet you when I get to the end of this row. Okay, here I am, down towards the end of row 4a, and I'm going to work two single crochets at the end to finish this row. And let's take a look at this before we turn, because now you can see we have our main color double crochets and our contrasting color double crochets. And that's the beauty of mosaic crochet. You're making horizontal lines and vertical lines. So we're ready now for row 4B, and we'll do the same stitches that we were doing, except our double crochets will be single crochets. And all, all of our singles will be singles, and all of our chain twos will be chain two. So that's what we will mimic on the back. This is our resting row. So we have a single in each of our two singles, and a single in our double, and two chains wherever we have two chains. So I'll get to the end of this row and meet you there. 
Okay, here I have finished row 4B and I've changed my color for my next row. But I don't need to demonstrate every row because you can go by the chart. You can now read each of your stitches that's on here and know what to work and how to work it. You'll see your stripes on the back and you will see your mosaic pattern forming on the front. And if you keep going through row 9B, this is what your swatch should look like. Here's the front. We have our double crochets coming down and they're going this way, which gives us this zigzag pattern. And there's the back with all the stripes. So now that you've learned how to read this chart, I'd like to briefly explain the other chart, which is shorter. A lot of designers will use this style of chart, and it's basically putting both rows into one. So if you see this type of chart in Mosaic Crochet in the inset method, you'll know that you work 1A across from the right to the left and 1B across from the left to the right. It's the same row on the chart, but it represents two rows of work. The only difference between the A rows and the B rows is the double crochet. As you learned here, your double crochets are only worked on your A rows. So on the A rows, when you see that symbol, it's a double crochet three rows below. But on the B row, when you come back, it's a single crochet because we work our single crochets where we had our double crochets. So that's the only difference on these two charts. Now, some designers will also use an X instead of a dot and two O's instead of one for the chains. But as long as you understand each designer's different style of making charts, then you're ready to go on your mosaic crochet. I hope you followed along and you successfully learned the inset mosaic crochet technique. If you haven't learned the overlay mosaic crochet technique, I have a link for that video in the video description below. Each of these mosaic crochet techniques has good points and bad points, so try them both and see which one you like best. If you have any questions about the inset mosaic crochet technique, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my crochet videos, including more mosaic crochet videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and happy mosaic crocheting to all of you. So there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video on, well, that's not how I want to start it.